Okay, I think we are live now. Yeah. yeah. I'm checking. Okay. <laughs> I prefer to check, you never know. Yes. Okay, we are live. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I hope Hello. we have people joining in. If you're joining in, hi. Give us a shout out, send us a, a comment so that we know you're here and listening. Hi, Lisbeth. Hi, Anna. Hi. I'm trying to see if I can see the comments as well, and I think I can actually on my you, screen. You will be able to see the comments. So yeah. we would like to know whether people are joining us and where you're from. We were we already discussed the topic of weather, but yeah. <laughs> I can tell you that the weather is nicer in Slovenia today than it was yesterday. Hi, Niri and Hello. Natalie from France is saying hi. Hello. Hello. Here in Bulgaria, we have a miracle today. It's like probably 12 degrees. It's sunny. Mm. So I've been out basically like this in the sweater. It's wow. after, after pretty rough week. It's very nice. Yeah, it's like spring. <laughs> it's same here. And it was very yeah. cold a few days ago, minus a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's now it was it was plus 11 degrees celsius two days ago i think so mm. a huge change yeah same here oh, we've, hello, got some, we've got somebody from galicia hello mm -hmm. galicia in the north of spain <laughs> what's the weather like in spain yesterday was awful we had a horrific storm wind mm -hmm. and everything but today is like you it's beautiful it looks like a spring so mm -hmm. crazy weather only Elizabeth is with snow in the winter, so <laughs> sorry. Um, I am, you can see the snow behind me, but I'm in the far north of Norway, so I'm actually above the Arctic Circle. Oh, wow. wow. So we just, we just got the sun back. I just, I wanted to ask how much sunlight you get these days. Is it like two hours? No, no, it, it increases by one hour f every five days or something now. Oh. Before you know, in May we have 24 hours daylight and sun, mm -hmm. um, but just a couple of weeks ago it was two hours, and yeah. then, and then around Christmas it was 58 minutes. Oh wow! <laughs> With daylight, of course wow. not. Oh Jenny, Jenny is here. Hi. Hello Jenny. Hi Jenny. I miss this a little bit. It's uh, it's like nice and cozy to to stay home in the winter. I I miss this time. I, li I used to live in north of Russia, so yeah, you know all about it. Yeah, I love it. All right, I think we have we have now twenty six people watching. Hello, everybody. I think we can start, right? Yeah. Before we get into our interview, uh, a quick hello from us. We are the Smile English Project. If you haven't heard of us before. Our project is dedicated to changing our perception of a walk with a dog. We want to show the world examples of walking with dogs that is good for both dogs and humans. So on our Facebook, on our Instagram, YouTube, and on our website, you will find different photos and videos of people having nice, relaxing walks with their dogs on long, on long loose, smiling leashes. And along with that, you will find interesting information and useful tips about dogs and their behavior. And one of the things we do are these um, interviews on Facebook with people uh, that are canine professionals and we talk about different topics. And we thought it would be great to start the year with this topic that's very near and dear to our hearts and that's education. We believe, we believe that learning about dogs is so important, and that's why we're very happy to have Lisbeth here today. Lisbeth herself has been learning about dogs for a long time, about two decades, and she's also been teaching other people about dogs. She founded the Nordic Education Center for Dog Trainers in 2011 and has since worked full time with this dog trainer school, both in Norway and in other countries. Uh, she's a teacher and an assistant professor, so this was something that came naturally for her. Uh, in her work, she focuses on canine communication, on behavior, on problem solving, and her teaching is based on high ethical standards in training and in everyday life with our dogs. 
So today we're going to ask different questions and the answers should be interesting both to dog caretakers, so everyone who has a dog and would like to learn a bit more about their dog, and also to dog professionals or people who are thinking about becoming either a dog trainer or some other kind of uh, profession concerning dogs. So let's just jump into the first question for Lisbeth. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Good. <laughs> So first of all, maybe let's talk a little bit about your education center. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we want uh, to know. I've, first of all, I've put the link to uh, Elizabeth's website, her education center, um, so you can find it. And we really wanted to ask you, um, you know, how did it all start and um, how many people graduated so far and uh, who are these people? So just um, tell us who comes. Yeah. Wonderful people. Um, I actually started um, while I was, I met Turid Rugos. We all know Turid. Right. She's the inspiration of what we're doing. I met her the first time in 2003 after reading her book on talking terms with dogs. Um, and then since I went to her dog trainer school in 2010, 2011, and I lived in south of Norway. I was planning to do private consultations and that's it really, just having like a, a part-time job close mm -hmm. to where I lived. So I went home to people and I helped them with their dogs. Um, this, people really wanted my services. I was very surprised. I lived in the countryside with a lot of hunters. So I, was, I wasn't mm -hmm. expecting this at all. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing puppy classes in my garden actually um with two and three participants you know just and then after a year i had so much to do i was doing like every night i was doing three different dog courses different places four times a week in addition to the private lessons so i needed someone to help me and then i couldn't find anyone with the same kind of thoughts about dogs and dog training as I had. So right. it was very natural to me. And I thought, well, then I just have to educate my own. I want, I want to mold them the way I want them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, and having worked at the college university for a few years as well, it was very natural to me to set up a course for dog trainers. So that's how it actually started. I needed help with what I was doing here in Norway. So I started in Norway and just by coincidence, really, one of the participants, he was living in Estonia, telling me that there was not really a lot of um, positive dog trainers in Estonia. So I thought maybe we should just try and see if someone wants to learn in Estonia. I've never been there before. I use Facebook. I think I spend around $200 on Facebook ads. And I started my first dog training school in Estonia in 2015 with 21 participants. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. And now, um, yeah, now what, we, what do we do? We went online 2019, just before the Corona. Amazing. Uh, and, um, uh now i think all together we have educated like finished our school 400 people in norway and abroad mm -hmm. um and now the, with the online courses we really get students from all over the world all continents unbelievable That's africa amazing. australia the us south america yeah Ooh. amazing <laughs> great international aspect of it you know yes. i really really do because i think we can learn so much from each other yes and i yeah. from russia and from finland who graduated your school so i know yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, have, I have very best feedback and uh, so those people who graduate your school what do they go on doing after finishing after graduating some of them one is actually here i can see marco in Tallinn yeah. here mm -hmm. and his wife is doing 
a, a really good job working with dogs, doing a little bit of what you are doing, actually, teaching people to walk in a smiley leash. Mm. Yeah? Um, so yeah. most people, they are working part time. Mm -hmm. right. Private consultations, so and so on, but, which, which is something that I would expect. A few of them in Norway and abroad has started their own full time businesses, uh, doing mostly working with dog owners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. but um, now since we started the online course, like the the online course, um, we also open up for more dog owners to learn about language and behavior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's lovely to hear. Mm -hmm. We because you've just had a five day um, free course, yeah. haven't you? On on yeah. signals and communication and i saw a message on facebook that you put out you had 800 people on the first day crazy because whenever i, I do know. something now i have to do it in norwegian uh and in english because i do we, we have the two schools and the two yeah different uh, departments so whenever i do something i never really think that i have to do it twice so <laughs> five day free facebook course and uh, the feedback has been really, really good. And I'm so excited when people, they are motivating me really to do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that's been fun. Uh, a bit tired, but fun. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. It's, it's still going on. You're, you're in the middle of, of a program right now. I am um, actually <laughs> teaching online this weekend. So we have a group now. I gave this, we have 46 students online. They do level 2A of the dog trainer school. And also they're from Mexico. We have a participant waking up at 3 a.m. to attend wow. today. <laughs> so they're really from all over the world. And right now they're doing the exercise today. And that's to film putting on a harness or something with on their dog to film themselves mm -hmm. doing that. And afterwards, when we've finished here, we will go through all the films and see how the dog reacts to the owner's body language. Mm -hmm. wow, so yeah. cool you found a way to include practical part of it in the online yeah. course. That's this great. is great. Mm -hmm. This is probably the biggest challenge, how to, how to do these things online and keep the level of quality. It is. Yeah. It is difficult, but we had to, because the corona happened just when we were about to finish the dog trainer school in Norway last year, we actually had to put some of the most important um, seminars online when they were doing mm -hmm. practical mm -hmm. stuff. So we really got to try out a lot of things, uh, which is, in a way, it was good because we could use the corona as a as an excuse <laughs> to try an error, you know, because mm -hmm. you have to try things. Nothing mm -hmm. will be Nothing will ever be perfect, but you have to strive to get it as good as you can get it. And by getting there, you need to really try many times and improve, constantly improve. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. And um, we have another question around education. So um, well, personally, for me, choosing um, a place where I wanted to study dog training was very difficult. I knew I wanted to study dog training. I knew I had, I wanted to study from the best, but it was very hard to find, you know, the people with the right approach, with the right ethics, because I, I didn't want just to go to any university and study something like old ways. So and I ended up actually mailing to it and she said she had a course by accident starting in the next month, but how, uh, it was just a pure luck for me, but nowadays, how would you like? Uh, how what would you advise to a person who is looking um, to to become a dog trainer? How to find the proper education? I just feel sorry for them because it's so confusing. Yeah, yeah. First mm -hmm. of all, they everyone is of course saying they do positive training. Mm -hmm. No one is saying I'm doing negative training. Everyone would say that doing positive dog training and the problem i don't know if it's a big problem but that's a not whole other discussion but in all countries that i know of in the western world mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, there's no official rec recognition of the um, of the profession as a dog trainer. Right. Mm -hmm. So everyone can call themselves, at least in the countries I have been in, uh, can call themselves a dog trainer. So mm -hmm. all courses and educations, really, they are in private schools, just like ours. We are yeah. also a private school or an institution um, like the um, the kennel clubs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they are also private. So you need to really, and I, actually I tell my students that, or my participants when they ask, I don't want them to start in our school if they're not really sure if it's the right thing for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we don't want students or participants that doesn't like what they're learning and not being happy with our courses. So yeah. you need to do your research. You really need to do your research. And I've got the questions beforehand, so I actually wrote down some tips. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay. Great. Always to um, make sure you find reliable sources. Yeah? If there is someone saying they are a dog trainer, that's fine. But I want to know where are they educated? What schools did they go to? Mm -hmm. That's very important for me to know. If you're a totally new dog owner, I mean, you don't know if Cesar Milan or Tudi Drugos or Ian Dunbar, you don't know these people. So mm -hmm. you need to talk to people. You need to just Google, read and talk to people. Mm -hmm. And I really, if you're totally new to this dog world, I would, I would wait for about six months before taking a decision. Mm -hmm. Because you could end up spending a lot of money on the wrong course. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Also, there's a lot of research, science today, in mm -hmm. dog behavior. So new mm -hmm. science, that's very important to me. Yeah. New, yeah? And by new, I mean 10 years is already old now. Mm -hmm. Because that's things right. are happening all the time. And of course, the chemistry. The chemistry between you and the teachers, or the, you have to look at, yeah, everything. <laughs> but yeah. really, uh, I think the hardest would be to find, a, yeah, who is truly working with positive uh, methods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. But also, saying just positive methods doesn't really tell the no, whole story. No, no, no. But all. everyone is saying that, yeah. But yeah. That's, the dog owner what what else can you don't know it's yet so mm -hmm. so yeah so actually you're looking even if either you're a dog owner looking to learn about dogs for the benefit of your own dog and yourself yeah or if you're someone aspiring to be a dog professional the first thing you do is loads and loads of research yeah, yeah. in you any case try and error don't you we have all been to different dog schools with our dogs, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. And we realized it's not the, the right class for us. So maybe I would suggest to spend a little bit money on going to a class and actually to see, you know, what they are teaching because what people are saying and what they're doing might be a bit different as well sometimes. Yeah. That's so well, true. Well, some schools have this option that you can go see a class without your dog. You can just mm -hmm. go and observe a class. I think that's really good. And it, yeah. it also shows that the school has nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. in yeah. English, it has nothing to hide. But on the other hand, as a dog owner going to a class, you do need to know what you're looking for and what you're looking at. Because it's not just about if you if you want to say, OK, we want a school with positive methods. We don't want a school that does bad things to dogs. You're not just looking for whether they're hitting the dog. Sorry to be so blunt, but there are other ways in which dogs can be treated badly or 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 um, other things you don't want to happen to your dog during do dog classes. It's not just about physical or or violence or things like that that are really obvious so are there any other things that we should be asking or looking for as dog owners or as future dog professionals i think it's very i mean when you when you're thinking about becoming a dog trainer you already kind of know a little bit about the dog mm -hmm. business and you know some of the 
names, uh, the, the famous ones, the, the authors and so on. Mm -hmm. But um, now, for, first of all, I tell everyone as a dog owner and whatever dog professional, you need to, to, to read on talking terms with dogs by Turi Drugos. You yeah. need to do that to understand your dog because every uh, instructor or dog trainer will convince you that they are doing the right thing, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So what I say sounds really, oh, yeah, everyone is like, yes, yeah, sounds logical. Very good. And then they can talk to um, someone else who's really convincing, but not mm -hmm. uh, not using the same methods that as I do, mm -hmm. but being much better at explaining them <laughs> uh, in, a, in a better way. So they end up on the wrong course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the wrong reasons. Yeah. Um, so you need, I think we're responsible for, um, that's one of our responsibilities when we get a dog, we need to learn something about them. That's, mm -hmm. and you have to start with their language. So when, once you start learning their language, you know how your dog feels. And then when you take your dog to a, your first puppy course or whatever, then when you see your dog and it's not feeling comfortable, that's not the right puppy class for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think yeah. it's important to, to learn, but also use a little bit of your gut feeling. If you feel something is off, just, mm -hmm. just the whole atmosphere, how dogs are behaving. If you see dogs are too, you know, just behaving in a too excited way or just too shut down, maybe that's not the right place. Yeah. And um, I, what I would do too is just looking for some of the uh, maybe webinars or seminars just to see what information mm -hmm. Also, the person is using, as you said, like the, the science is uh, constantly updating now. And if they are talking about domin dominant sphere is something that's so old, that's, you know, not relevant anymore. Maybe that's not a, not a person to learn from. Yeah, then you should move on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> and far away. Um, um, what about not only what they are saying, but how they are presenting it? You know, what tools they are using and, you know, how can you tell if they are good or bad? Is that a good way to differentiate too? Then it, it depends, you know, I think really we should respect the fact that if you're a totally new dog owner, you don't know it if people are, if some convincing person is telling you to wear, or a veterinarian is telling you to wear a collar. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You know, the problem hmm. is, and then, um, yeah. So that's why it's your responsibility to read, to read and to listen to what different people are saying. And then we can only say to everyone that they need to keep, you know, they, they to make up their own mind. We can't really. Mm -hmm. We can. Only it's quite easy now on the internet, you know, to present something really pretty and really flashy, you know, that looks really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw something yesterday. No, the other day I got an email actually from a company selling um, a, a correction harness. Yeah. I've and the way that. they presented the correction harness um, was really, I mean, uh, wonderful. It, 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 it mm -hmm. you know, not a problem uh, to the dog, and the dog owner will have such an easy life with that correction harness. Um, so, again, you need to just, you need to go to different courses to learn uh, different things and to make up your own mind, I think. But I think mm -hmm. it's safe to say to new dog owners or prospective dog owners, anything that causes pain is something to avoid. Yeah. So, and most of these kinds of pieces of equipment that use words like correction or no pull are things that hurt they cause pain and that's why the dog stops pulling and that's not the way there is a better way so this is something that of course we listen to different voices we follow the latest science and all of that is absolutely true but if something hurts don't put it on your dog i don't think any new science is ever going to refute what i just said <laughs> so safe to say that. yeah, that's a given but again, to know if it really, I mean, to know if it hurts or is uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. 
You need to know yeah. your dog's reactions. Yeah. You have to understand what's happening. You know, looking away, they're having a certain behavior. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I think that really the dog language is the basic, minimum basic of what you you need to know. Yeah. Besides personally, when you start learning, you're like, wow, a whole new world opens up. So it's really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, you get to know your dog once again, even if you had you've had that dog for a while. Yeah. And you start learning about their communication and calming signals, you really get to know your dog. So I, it's the best thing you can do, really. It's never too late. <laughs> yeah. another, another thing I think often happens when people have dogs with behavioral issues, <coughs> especially if these are behavioral issues that are kind of dangerous. So if we have a dog that's reactive, that's lunging at other dogs, barking, growling, things like that people get worried that something really bad might happen and people may get desperate. So that changes their perception when they're looking for knowledge or if they're looking for an expert to help them. And they start thinking, oh my God, I don't really want to hurt my dog, but maybe I have to do these things because this expert is telling me I have to do these things and this is the only way because my dog is mm -hmm. horrible. I think that's another factor that comes into play with learning about dogs is how you are feeling. If you're just yeah. have a little puppy that kind of, you know, chews on your on your uh, pant leg a bit, but otherwise is cute and adorable. Or if you have a large dog and you're afraid that dog is going to bite someone and you're a bit desperate. So how how would you how would you direct people who are a bit afraid and desperate? when they're looking for knowledge or looking for an expert to help them? Mm, I'm, I'm not sure if I understand the question. If, if the dog owner is, what? Can you rephrase it? When we have a dog <laughs> with behavioral issues that are quite severe, mm -hmm. and we worry that our dog is going to hurt someone or something yeah. really bad is going to happen, it can be very easy to convince us that we need to use some harsh methods because that's the only way some people are going to tell us. So for people in this situation, what would you say to help them choose the best way? Of I always say I, I think it's, very, it's, not, it's not very complicated. Mm -hmm. every, uh, every animal, including us humans, we do anything pretty much to avoid pain and discomfort. So mm -hmm. let there be no doubt, pain helps. If you, if you inflict pain on an animal or another human, we will try to behave in such a way that we don't feel pain again. Yeah? Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. What does it do to your dog if you, if you hurt your dog? Will he learn anything? No, he won't learn anything. Um, and of course, the relationship between you and your dog is not going to be very good, is it? Because you're not treating him well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's your choice. Do you want to? Um, if it's with children, we used to use different methods with our children in school. Not very mm -hmm. long ago, <laughs> even yeah. when I went to school, the English teacher was hitting us here. Yeah. Oh. On our, uh, <laughs> that's how old I am, by the way. Um, <laughs> but but really, yeah, you you have an option. Do you want to use pain or no pain? Of course. And it can be done even with the 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 worst of behaviors. I they been... can be changed without pain. It's, it's been proven so many times with mm -hmm. how do you train a bear? How well, do you train hopefully, a hopefully you don't because it's a wild animal and should be left in the wild, but I know that they do in or, or bears, yeah. yeah. You can't really, yeah. Mm. yeah. That's where they started the clicker training with bigger animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's read some comments. We have, yeah. if you... If you a good one so um okay let's go from the top 
So we have many people joining from everywhere. We have someone from Norway joining, by the way, too. And um, Bianca says it's heartwarming to hear that people around the world are changing their attitude to dog behavior and training. That's, I think, a given. That's true. And the fact that it is, if you have so many people from around the world joining your course, I think is, a, you know, yeah, is a proof to that. So definitely agree with this. Um, so, uh, so here is saying what I liked a lot is that Elizabeth Duarte is teaching from the heart. She loves what she's doing and that's perfect. So happy to hear this. And I agree. <laughs> and Matt uh, from Norway is saying, I really wish there were stricter rules about who can train dogs. I know about some horrendous dog trainers and I feel so frustrated they are allowed to keep teaching with laws on their side. I'm so glad you're talking about this. It can really help dog owners to choose a, an up-to-date and ethical trainer. Yeah. And that's really a problem that we, um, there is no regulation. So you really need to do your research mm -hmm. on your own yeah. and when choosing education and the trainer as well. Mm -hmm. But if you have laws and regulations when it comes to how we should treat our animals, mm -hmm. and it's very clear in Norwegian, in the Norwegian law that we should not, for example, use any device that is causing discomfort or pain to your dog. And now we know, for example, colors can do that. So that means you shouldn't use colors. You should yeah. use a well-fitted harness, for example, a well-fitted one, not just anyone, but as to fit. If not, Good it's shape. the same thing with, as the color, yeah. Yeah, and um, so Laura um, from um, Slow Dog Movement sent us a question. I'm so sorry, I don't understand it very well. So she's saying, are you not uh, talking about just dog guardians attending classes? While this is not a possibility in many parts of the world, none of us would be suggesting to go to an actual dog school with classes unless a very small group of four, as in puppy class. Uh, yeah. I, we, we mentioned puppy classes and I think Elizabeth also said that when she started out she had puppy classes with like three puppies. Um, maybe, maybe Laura is referring to the old way of teaching class with a bunch of dogs doing obedience exercises. Maybe that's what she was mm. trying to ask about. But I am speaking to dog owners in in Russia and Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, in countries where that is the only option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it's not always I can tell people that, you know, we can tell them what would be ideal to do. And then you have to find out what is the closest I can come to that. So just wanted to, to say that, Laura, that, you know, uh, I do understand what you mean. We don't want dog classes as such. Um, the old-fashioned way we can do it with smaller classes and so on but that's not all countries it's definitely not all countries most countries are still doing it the old-fashioned mm -hmm. yeah yeah definitely it's at all any proper dog schools hmm. fiona is saying that she would train a bear very carefully <laughs> and also a dog. <laughs> that's an excellent point yeah <laughs> All right, let's move on to our questions then. So I would like to know if if I wanted to start teaching online, what would be your advice for me? To spend an incredible amount of nights and evenings teaching yourself <laughs> how to do the technical stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, no, but I, I had to. I started doing webinars actually already in two thousand and thirteen, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and I've been um, to to do this all online. We're using different course platforms and so on. So you you I you should either it depends how much money you have or how smart you are. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> be saving time and do something else that you can do and outsource it let someone else build your teaching platform and just you know teach how to use it or do you want to learn it yourself do everything yourself yeah mm -hmm. uh, but it's a lot of technical stuff and it's blended learning is what we call it when we do something online and offline because that's my dog trainer school has four levels and it's only the mm -hmm. First one who's completely online 
And for me, that was okay. a big step because I also believe that when it comes to dog training, we really need to be there. We need mm -hmm. to be in the same room. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. This is so, a real challenge. We've talked about it already. It is, yeah. And also, so do you have a lot of? Sorry, sorry no. <laughs> we're doing it again. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Start learning how to use these tools. It's also about figuring out. Okay, I used to do this thing uh, like outdoors with uh, ten people and two dogs, and now how do I do it online? It's about this kind of process taking place where you want to try to teach skills not just information and you have to kind of move all of that online so do you have any any good tips on that i think you need to talk to you need, if you're not a teacher yourself because i am a, a teacher by education as well um and i have uh, three other uh, teachers uh, and one uh, who's uh, what you call it doctor of of uh, is it that in phd mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. teaching methods wow. yeah yeah oh, so wow. I have those people on my teams and we we mm -hmm. have meetings once a month to find out the best methods to do this so mm -hmm. um and teaching is a profession so yeah. you need to yeah i think you need to to have some people who have that as a profession because yeah. yeah we can learn that as well like there are just so many opportunities now and uh, i mean i'm i'm very I was optimistic about COVID because it brought us so many new ways of learning and you can mm -hmm. literally now go and uh, learn from experts in whatever field, um, including the online learning. I know Leti now is taking a course exactly in that and how to um, how to teach online in uh, more effectively. Yeah. So yeah, I think it just opened so many opportunities for us to learn new skills and one as long as you plan it well and you know what you want so for people to really learn it as um, not just you know just to hear a lecture but really try it out and show you how they do it and get some feedback then i think there is a possibility to do it yeah yeah i have another question about this uh, side of mm -hmm. things when you do the practical part of yeah. your uh, teachings so people go away and uh, do videos and then you review them all together and everybody looks at everybody's videos for example for example yeah. today, this weekend they're they're supposed to they're filming themselves doing one thing they get an exercise they upload mm -hmm. it so we can all see it um observation is one major thing that we do a lot of at the dog trainer school so they have to see yeah. their own video at least three times and then they have to uh -huh. comment on minimum two other films so that everyone gets right. two other comments. So they have to they get the practice to observe other dogs as well. Mm -hmm. And for some, for some of the subject, this online teaching for exactly observation techniques like this is actually, I think, working better than being in person. I can see that. Yes. Uh, the dogs are relaxed. The human is relaxed. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. If they come to, to a place like where we do in-person seminars, the dogs are stressed. The owners are even more stressed than the dogs. And they don't like it when people are watching them training their own dogs, you know. So yeah. it's not, not in a natural environment. So, and this is actually the first part of a whole course. So they will eventually meet each other. Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. they do meet each other, and the good thing is that I get to see in their living rooms and outside in their home. <laughs> you know, we get to know each other. I, mm -hmm. we, we really do. So I'm very excited about that. But a lot of things I'm still not com that comfortable doing online. Um, however, that said, um, we have promised that we will go through with all the dates for the dog trainer school that just started. <clears throat> if we can meet or not, because we don't know how this Corona thing is going and we already postponed everything for a year, so, mm -hmm. yeah. True, and uh, in the light of everything uh, we've 
discussed like how do you see just the future of dog training someone in the comments saying that the industry desperately needs to be regulated like do you agree with that how do you see it? the future of our profession <laughs> no that's i ha you know i don't know mm -hmm. and with regulations who is going to regulate it cesar milan yeah Animal club who yeah. shouts the loudest is the ones that gets the voice so I'm not mm -hmm. sure, I'm not a big fan of having a lot of regulations about who can be what in Norway, but because who will decide? What is the right way? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. and for in Spain, yeah. we have a little bit of regulation where I am. So you, you, to be a dog trainer, you have to be certified by the government in the municipality where I am. So there is a little bit of law and it's written in uh, rules, etc. But it was all written down by the people that were already trainers when yeah. this law came out. So, of course, if you want to train a dog that is uh, considered a dangerous dog, because we have this Dangerous Dog Act here, you have to be one of these trainers. Actually, nobody else can do it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So this you're right, it's whoever, whoever shouts the loudest. Mm -hmm. But I do think, I do think really internet is the future. And I was discussing with a colleague of mine the other day, and as, because we already have the equipment, not, not me personally yet, but it's there. So I think, and we were laughing because I said, in, I think very shortly, we will all be able to wear this 3D goggles or something. So it could actually look like we're in a room holding a lead. Well, we can do that now. Exactly. Yeah. So that's a <laughs> thing to bring into online uh, mm -hmm. training. Because now COVID is one thing, but we're going to, to travel less because of the environment. It's going to be more expensive, I believe. So we need to do more online and we have to find ways to make it, yeah, as good as we can. Mm. Mm. I like this vision. It, it is, it is yeah. very positive, so to say. The goggles, I want to be yeah. the first one. <laughs> we, were, we were having this conversation in the, in the Sarina, and this course that I'm doing is with Sarina, which is also the a PDT member, mm -hmm. and she's a teacher. And uh, Jenny, which is in this chat, was asking about this same thing uh, last week because she has a real trouble with not being there with the dog when things are happening. And she wants to try this uh, connecting with a camera somehow, you know, so that the person is outside and she's inside with the camera looking at what is happening. I think it's going to happen soon. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. They'll get a three meter uh, leash and then they get the goggles or whatever you call them. <laughs> <laughs> and the harness. Welcome to the dog trainer school. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, all these all this VR games where you can run and shoot. So why is this better than training a dog, why handling a leash? You know? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know what? I, I view VR for gaming. It's fun. <laughs> don't Minecraft because you really get sick. Um, but I think that they are already using this technology for learning. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just yeah. a matter of time. So maybe in a few years, when we look back to this video, we're gonna be like, "Ha ha! We didn't know how soon this was of going course. to be." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even now, like uh, even if I think about three years back when I was just trying to discover, learn about dogs, and it was so hard. And now maybe it's also like the the, the community I'm in. Mean, but now I think it's so much easier to find the information and mm -hmm. webinars. I, I three years ago I couldn't find any good webinars. So even now it's already evolving so quick, and I love to see it honestly. It Although easier to find so you say it's easier to find but i think also it can be more confusing to new dog owners because there's mm. so much information out there maybe yeah. yeah i was just going to say i'm loving the fact that i can join different seminars webinars and so on but i'm also very thankful that i have this base knowledge that i got in a classroom from yeah. Sir Drugas 
because this mm. helps me choose the good ones. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's really easy for for me because of this base knowledge of this course that took almost two years. It's easy now for me to to see the good from the bad, to see the ones that I want to learn from, and that's something that there's no other way to gain this knowledge. You have to do it by yourself, either through reading books or through going to serious courses, not just one day seminars, but yeah. something more, you know, all encompassing. I think. Yeah, for sure. And I, I want important. to add to this. I agree with this so much. You need a base and you need to have a very good base to then navigate in this world. Mm -hmm. uh, like the example of the Turit course is very good because when we first started, my expectation was like, oh, first day we're going to start training dogs. No way. We were for, we were for first three units, we were just learning about the dog as species, about anatomy of the dog brain and uh, the dog body all the very fundamental knowledge that I now understand is so, so important. So definitely covering your base is one of the most important things to yeah. do. Yeah. And um, okay. um, Elizabeth, can you tell us um, just uh, for people who are interested now to about your dog school, um, can you give us like um, a breakdown of what is coming next in your school, what people can sign up for and how to do that? That's why I actually said yes to doing this interview with you now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would be doing the online course this weekend, but I thought it was a good opportunity to talk to you, of course. And because we are starting our level one tomorrow, the online course tomorrow. Uh, but we start that four times a year. So next time is in April. So, um, But just look up nordicdogtrainer.com, level one on the dog trainer school and brings you to uh, our webpage where it explains everything and you can sign up and, and start tomorrow with the first lesson and then you'll meet me for q and a's and you know now how much i'm talking so <laughs> <laughs> but this course will give you that basis that we were talking about the knowledge that you need the, I you hope know, so. this information is vital that course is really definitely for every like I say, all dog enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about dog language, basic behavior. What is a dog? How do they behave? Uh, what is their normal behavior? We need to know what a dog's natural behavior is so that we can mm -hmm. see, is it a problem behavior? Is it an abnormal behavior? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the behaviors that the dogs are doing is actually very normal behaviors. If barking. a dog barking out the window, of course, it's a normal yeah. behavior. Of course, maybe we don't want to have a barking dog in the window, but it's nothing wrong with your dog, do, you know. Yeah. But you need to know how to train it to stop barking in the window. Or manage the situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Close the window. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. But yeah, thank you so much, Elizabeth. That was very, very interesting chat. I hope it was useful for people there. People write in the comments. Um, if you enjoyed it, if you learned something, um, mm -hmm. if this information was useful for you. So thank you so much, Lisbeth. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And um, if you have, um, and we will put the, the link into the comments now, uh, just for people who are interested. And yeah, if you have any questions, uh, we'll try to answer them uh, after the live. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>